I was going to do a talk on Wireshark, but I decided to change it at the last minute. So I'm just going to talk about ghost frames today. So <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, all right. Fine, fine. Um, I'm going to talk about something. I call it shark foo. Uh, it's really, um, it's more, um, it's more just my customization, some, some things I like, um, how, do I, how I use it to kind of quickly get to what I want to see um, you know, when I'm troubleshooting. Uh, so some of this stuff, uh, you know, maybe all of it is familiar to a lot of you, but I'm sure there's several of you who uh, could use this information, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, share. Uh, Wireshark specifically because it runs natively on the Mac um, and also because it's free. Um, and not to say that, um, that we should all always be using free tools, but there's a lot of good free tools out there and take advantage of it if you can. Um, I mean, there's other tools out there to do um, packet analysis like, uh, like OmniPeak, right, uh, which I own. Uh, but uh, it is Windows only, so I have to open up a VM or something, and then I have to do some other trickery to, to make it work, but, uh, which, is, which is fine, because it's a great tool, gets you the answers really quick. Um, but again, why I'm talking about Wireshark is because not everybody can, af can afford you know, two plus grand to, for, for a tool um, if you don't use it every day, right? If it's something that's, that's really gonna benefit you and you're gonna get you know, the ROI, you know, you're actually gonna use it and, and make your money back, then I, I, it's definitely worthwhile. But if it's something that maybe only once in a while or just right now, you can't afford it, um, this is a good way to, to get into packet captures and do analysis and, and study for your CWAP and your SP and all that stuff. So um, the first thing is uh, Wireshark is available uh, cross platform. So it's Mac OS, uh, Windows, it's also supported on Linux. Um, now, in Mac OS, um, it's really easy for us to do packet captures because it's native, right? Uh, it's BSD based and it's very easy to do packet captures. Uh, so, super helpful to have it on, uh, to have a Mac for that. Uh, of course, you know, then the question is, you know, do you want to be on the Mac platform or not? That's a whole, uh, that's a whole other issue. But one of the benefits of having it is that it does run natively. Uh, there's, uh, there is, as far as I know, unless somebody else, I, I don't know of any uh, native capability to be able to do multiple channel packet captures in OS X. Uh, maybe, maybe the sidekick will give us that ability uh, to be able to, to do things like that. But, um, but other than that, I don't know of any way to re be able to do it. And then you're, you're just, you're relegated to two, right? Whereas in Windows, you do have options to do multi-channel uh, packet captures that you don't have in, in OS X. So there is, or Mac OS, so there are some limitations there. Um, we do have tools like, like Wireshark itself, like I said, runs natively and you can start doing packet captures out of it, but there are some limitations that I'll go through. Um, Airtool by, uh, by Adrian Ganado is a great, great tool. Uh, it's free, which I've been telling, I literally, I'm always telling Adrian, you don't charge enough for your tools, man. They're, they're so valuable. And I'm like, Airtool, I mean, charge like $4.99 or something for it, because it's, it's a valuable tool. It helps us do something that, that normally is kind of a pain and makes it really easy and quick. And when, when, you're, trying, when you're on site and when you're trying to get to the, to the um, to the answer quickly, you know, something that can ease, make things easy for you is always beneficial. Um, and then of course the sidekick um, uh, is gonna be able to allow us to do packet captures as well. Um, so some things to know first about, uh, about the, on the Mac end. So on the Mac end, uh, as I said, it runs natively. So we can, we can start doing packet captures right out of Wireshark as long as we go into, um, here into monitor mode, right? So, so your interface must be in monitor mode. RF monitor mode obviously is the mode that allows the NIC to hear everything. It's not associated, so it's not just talking to one AP, it's hearing all the stuff that's in the air. So that's what we want. Um, so as long as you're in that mode, you can start beginning to capture packets uh, in theory. Uh, you should be able to. Uh, I've been having some issues with my, uh, with my Mac. Uh, uh, as some of you may know, <laughs> so it's my. I'm sorry. No, you're right. You're right. The Mac has some kind of allergy to me, so I don't know. Let's see if it's if it's okay. So we're collecting packets. You can see there, and um, the limitation is that we really have no control 
uh, over this, uh, as far as what channel we're on, right? So we're on channel one, and I can't, in Wireshark, there's no way for me to tell it what channel I want to pick. So that's one of the limitations. So Adrian's tool is fantastic for that. But let me show you, there is, there is another way to do it without Adrian's tool, but again, it's kind of a pain. You can use the terminal and you can use the airport tool. Again, also kind of a pain because it's hidden down uh, a layer you know, way down the tree. So, you, you know, you have to get in this folder in order to use it, or you can create what we call a symbolic link, uh, which you can just Google and say, you know, basically you take that line and you, you put a command ls before it and you, and you basically create link that air tool, or um, air tool, airport command so that you can just type it at, at the CLI. And then once you do that, um, you, can just, you can just do things like, uh, like if I just wanted to do a scan, I could just do airport s and it starts to, doing a, a scan of the network. Um, and I can also set the channel. So there is, a, there is a, a way to do that. You just do airport, I'm sorry, yeah, airport. Uh, dash C and then the channel you want to scan, right? So I could just do like 36, let's say. And then that would set my, my uh, adapter on 36 and then I open up Wireshark and then it's capturing on 36. Um, again, it's just kind, of, just kind of an extra thing you gotta do. The Air Tool is really cool because uh, as you saw just a moment ago when I brought it up, it allows me to open it up and I can just hit a chan whatever channel I want. I can select the, the, the uh, width that I want. Uh, and just go straight to that channel and start uh, collecting data right away. Now, up here, all I'm doing is setting the channel. I'm not doing any packet capture, right? So I can actually set it on 13 if I want. Now I'm set at 20 megahertz on channel 13, and if I start a packet capture in Wireshark, it's going to be on channel 13. So right there, super handy just to set what channel I'm gonna be scanning on in Wireshark. Um, but the other cool thing you can do, now this is useful if you wanna do a, a, like a live view of a, of a packet capture, right? Um, if you don't need to do a live view, then, uh, and again, I'm sorry if, if, I know most of you are familiar with this, but uh, bear with me. You can just click on a specific channel down here in the capture section, and it'll just start capturing in the background, and then whenever you stop, it'll open up in whatever application you've chosen to, for it to open up in. He also has integrations with cloud, uh, cloud uh, services as well. So really, really fantastic way to do packet captures. Really easy and very quick. Now, on the Windows side, Side, unfortunately, there's not um, there's no way to do it natively. So, one way or another, it's going to cost you something, right? It'll cost you a little, or it'll cost you a lot, but it's going to cost you something. Fortunately, there are a lot of ways to do it. Traditionally, it's been the Air, Air PCAP NX, uh, which is oftentimes uh, hard to find these days because they don't make it anymore. And it's limited, uh, you know, single stream, 11N. Uh, so it has various limitations. Now, I wrote a blog post, uh, and, and all these um, links will be in the uh, slides, and, and I'll post the slides so you have the access to the links, uh, Drew. Uh, but uh, OmniPeak uh, is an option for Windows, but again, it's expensive, but it's a great tool. So if you can afford it, I highly recommend it. But we're talking about, I can't, what are some other options, right? So Wireshark is available, obviously, natively, but you can't do, uh, you can't put the NIC, your native NIC in RF monitor mode. So now, again, you could try to find one on eBay, and I mean, like three months ago, I actually found several Air, uh, Air PCAPs and and uh, they were all like you know several hundred to a thousand dollars and now now what I'm getting is is these uh, these other adapters which are pretty inexpensive mostly for Cali some for Windows they work in conjunction you have to have a, a third party router and and all that so. But my blog post uh, actually just uh, gives you some other options that are available out there. So acrylic Wi-Fi is, is a really good one. It's a scanner, uh, but it allows you to do um, uh, PCAPs with a select list of NICs and inexpensive NICs. Uh, so you can do that. Tamilsoft ComView is another great tool, uh, kind of like OmniPeak. It does analysis. Um, it's about 500 bucks, so it's not, not as expensive as OmniPeak, uh, but it does also support a, a, ver a, a varied list of, uh, of NICs that you can use of varying spatial streams streams and things like that. Uh, now there's a free way with Microsoft Network Monitor. Uh, there's a couple, there's a write up here and then there's a video that Wi-Fi Trent 
uh, made uh, that's on YouTube that shows you how to use that tool. It's a tool that's not made anymore, supported by Microsoft, but you can still download it. Uh, officially, it's supported on like Windows 2000, 2003, things like that. But um, there's varying levels of success. So you could try that and see if it'll work for you. Um, but I think you'll have better luck with the other ones. Uh, MediGeek uh, now offers uh, monitor mode with a list of supported NICs. So they have a, a bunch of NICs. Again, it's like $800 for the software. Good software, uh, nothing wrong with the software. I'm just saying if, if you're looking to keep costs down, you know, that's, you're, that's not going to help you. But it is a, a great tool. Um, OmniPeak, again, expensive. And then recently, Wi-Fi Nodule has a blog on how to turn a uh, wireless lamp pine to an external packet capture device and feed it to Wi-Fi. Wireshark, so that's fantastic. Because 75 bucks, and you have you can do uh, packet captures in Windows all day long. So that's really good. And there's some other options. Uh, uh, Ronald Van Cloonen, uh, uh tweeted a, a few things that he like that he likes to do to do packet captures as well. So there are options out there. It's just a little. You just got to go through a few more hoops than you do uh, when you're doing Mac OS. Uh, but that's available uh, as well. So. Uh, the, the first thing I want to talk about, again, I know some of this stuff, don't roll your eyes, we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, custom profiles. So custom profiles, just like it sounds, it allows you to create a profile that is unique uh, to a, a task at hand, right? So you can have a profile that's just generic 802.11. You can have one that's made for Ethernet, specific you know, to, to Ethernet. You can have one that's for, uh, I have one that I call review, that I, I mark packets and I just select those packets and I create a separate file that only has those packets. So if I'm going through uh, an issue with a customer, I, I don't have to scroll through everything and just kind of say, ignore this, ignore this, here's the packet you want. I just put the packets that I want them to see, and I say, look, this is how the flow happened, this is the relationship between the device and the AP or whatever, and this is why we're seeing these issues. So um, really quick, uh, to do a profile is very straightforward. Uh, on the bottom uh, right, you simply uh, click here to access your profiles. You right click uh, to, uh, to get to the edit and you can manage your profiles here and you can just plus or minus, so add a profile, remove a profile. So whatever profile you're set to, as you make your unique uh, customizations, my columns, my colors, you know, uh, anything that you want to put in there, uh, the view of what panes you have and how, you know, are they on top of each other? Are they next to each other? If you only have two panes instead of three panes or whatever, all of that is saved. So that way you can very quickly move between modes, right? Maybe you have, you know, I don't, maybe you have one that's a, that's a profile for, for doing uh, roaming and another one to do review like I have, another one to do uh, voice analysis or whatever. You can do that. So instead of having to go and say, well, which row do I need? Wh which column do I want to see? Um, you can just put the ones that you want and you can quickly get to where you, where you want to go. Um, so profiles are very powerful uh, and very uh, useful and it's something that you can share as well. Uh, when you create a profile, if you go to the About Wireshark, and you go to your folders, in your personal configuration, there is a profiles folder and all your profiles are in there. So if you want, if you create one that you like, now one thing I will also say is when you create a profile that you like, make sure you back it up. So, because uh, if, uh, if you have to re reinstall or something crashes, you lose that profile. So I just have a, I just zip it up. I just right click on the folder or, or on, on the specific folder or maybe just the entire profile folders. I zip it up and I save it in a backup. Uh, so that way if something happens, I can restore it. Uh, you know, just remember if you make changes to, to save it, because last night I, I deleted, somehow deleted the profile and lost all the specific changes I was making for this presentation. So I had to kind of spend time redoing that this morning. So uh, profiles are, are very, 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 very cool. So uh, let's move on to the next one. We have uh, columns that matter. So columns are, are really uh, powerful and important because you can put a specific columns. So here you can see I have like a duration ID and priority. So I can see is, is, the, is it being tagged? Is the frame being tagged properly by the device or by the application? Uh, the, da <coughs> the data rate, uh, the SSID. There's a lot of columns that you can do. So you can know exactly what you're looking at. Choose the columns that you want to see. So I'm going to show you how to, how to do that. Um, Pretty straightforward. Again, you can choose from an existing subset of columns, 
right? Or you can go into the column preferences and click plus and then create a new column, whatever, you know, let's say it was SSID. And then you have to put in uh, the specific uh, field that you want to put in there. Now, most of us don't know those fields. I don't know these fields by heart. So typically what I have to do is I'll, I'll find it. So I'll, I'll go to like, uh, for example, a, a beacon and I'll come down here and then I'll just, I'll just go to the tags where, where SSID is and I will just simply right click and just say up here, uh, this column and then uh, there's my SSID column uh, right there. So I can do that with any field here that I feel that I want RSN information. Uh, you can pick it, you know, you know, if you're using uh, CCM or TKIP and you can right click again, apply as a column and that way you can quickly see it. And then you can just check and uncheck the ones you wanna see. Right? You can also create a profile and assign certain columns to certain profiles. Again, gets you through really quick. So this, again, I'm sure is all basic stuff that everybody knows, uh, setting up these columns. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff so far. Um, Colorizing packets, I think everyone's familiar with colorizing packets. Uh, awesome because immediately you can see what, you know, am I looking at a management frame, a data frame, uh, what, what, whatever it is. Uh, now this, the, the most common one, the one that I think pretty much everyone uses is based off, I'm assuming it's based off MetaGeek. They, they Joel or any MetaGeek, did you guys come up with this, this color scheme yourself? Or do you guys pull it from somewhere else? It's originally <laughs> Okay, but so you can get it there, and I have a link to that blog post. It's Trent. It's uh, Trent Joel's blog post, uh, and you can download the the profile that has that, and you can just import that, uh, and it's really great. But you can also customize your own. You don't have to use that one, or maybe you can tweak it if you want. So the way uh, that works is you go to your your view menu, and you go to your uh, colorizing rules and you can import or you can edit. So for example, I could just go in here and say, you know, data, for example, uh, uh, just data frames in general, and then I can add, actually add the filter. So I would do like wireless LAN uh, type, uh, I, I think it's two? No, is that, is that right? Well, that's okay, because I have a fancy little cheat that uh, Francois, uh, Verge is made, and it's on his website. Uh, oh, there it is, it's, it's two. So I can just go right over here, and now I can, I can paste that, uh, that filter in here, whoops. And now I have a, cre I created a new color, but it has no color yet. So what I'll do is I'll just click on that, and I'll you know, add a color, I'll make it blue, because that's what we use a lot for, for data. And there we go, and now we have a new uh, color and uh, well the black on blue is probably not great maybe I'll do white on blue so we have more contrast there we go now I have added that and you see a data file right a data frame right there is colored right so we created a nice uh, color the other thing we can do is we can uh, go to the website and download that file so remember I said those profiles you can just download them and import them so this is the uh, the blog post and I can just download the file uh, right to my laptop and then uh, uh, right there on my laptop. And uh, what I can do is I can just drag it into my profiles and, uh, or I can just take just that one little piece of the color. So I can go back into Wireshark, folders, uh, into my per personal configuration over here. And what I can do is, well actually if I go outside, this is all the default stuff. So I can actually just unzip this and just say, okay, you know what, I, I'm gonna, go in this MetaGeek profile. I'm just gonna copy uh, this color filter and I'm gonna put it in there. And now I should be able to, uh, to use uh, the color filters. Yeah, now I got it colors in my default profile. Uh, the, the alternative, the other thing I can do is I can just take that entire folder and just drag it in here. And then boom, now I have a profile that's the MetaGeek profile that has all my colors. And it has certain columns that they, that they have picked because that's, that's part of their profile. So again, all that information is saved in there. So the colorization, again, very cool uh, to very quickly see what's going on, right? You can, you can quickly see things like, like uh, are we having uh, low retries or is, am I getting good data, um, data transmission? If you're just seeing like a lot of blue and orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, you know, you're getting data act, data act, data act. 
stack, uh, you're, or a bunch of data and a block act or something like that, you're like, oh, that's normal Wi-Fi, right? That, that looks like it's working well. The colors are telling me that. I don't have to like go in and look at each frame and decipher what it is because the colors are telling me, right? So uh, very nice. For somebody like me, you know, ADHD, patterns and colors and stuff like that really makes things easy for me. So this, for me, was, was awesome when I, when I really kind of figured that, that, whole, uh, that whole thing out. So uh, the next thing is custom displays filters. So display filters are very powerful in, uh, in, uh, in well, in powerful period. Uh, you can do things like, for example, I have display filters for specific devices. So some device, like this is my laptop, my iPhone, and my iPad. I use them a lot to, to do certain things. But I can also create custom ones on the fly. I do it all the time when I'm at a customer site and I want to troubleshoot a specific, say, device and an AP, and I just want to see that relationship. I create filters, and I'm only seeing those items, right? And then that way I can quickly, as I'm ch making changes and stuff, just go back and see that specific item. Uh, you can also do frame types. So if I just want to look at beacons or I just want to look at data frames or I just want to look at whatever, I can pick a specific frame. Really great when you're, when you're studying, when you want to learn like the CWAP and things like that. And then, of course, one of my favorites is be able to group filters. So put a bunch of different filters together and really get detailed information of what it is exactly that you want to see. So... Wireshark has an entire, uh, uh, on their website and their wiki, you can get uh, the list of all the filters and up to what version of, of Wireshark they, they are supported. Um, my, um, so I do refer to this at times. The one that I use the most is the one from uh, Francois that I showed you earlier. So on, uh, again, all these links are, 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 will be in there on his blog if you just search for Wireshark filter. Uh, it'll take you right to his blog post, uh, or should here common display filters, and it's a very very nice PDF that really gets you know all the, the basically hits all the highlights, the the main ones that I'm going to be looking at most of the time. So very useful tool. Uh, so filters are very powerful. Uh, filters allow me to do things like say for example, if I want to troubleshoot like a specific phone. So notice these filters here. None of these filters have anything to do with Wi-Fi. That's because I'm on the default profile again. So filters are part of a profile as well. So if I go to 802.11, all of a sudden I got these filters that I didn't have before, right? And I just name these again, AD, ADHD brain. So I, I do things to like in patterns and stuff. So brackets and all this stuff that makes stuff easy for me to see. So I have like a bunch of devices there. I have my, my devices. I have a couple of Cisco phones. I have an AP when I was doing some troubleshooting at a customer site a few months back. Um, I have various, uh, I have like, here's like probes. So I have probe requests and probe responses. So that way I, you know, if I want to see, you know, if we're getting, if things are working out well, or if I want to look at maybe device capabilities and things like that so I can look at like association request and response, right? So I can see that in my, so very quickly I'm able to, to drill down to things. And then over time, as you start doing different things, you start developing different filters and you start realizing, oh, this is very useful for, for different situations. Uh, one that I like to use a lot is this uh, QoS, uh, I call it the QoS filter, but wireline QoS priority, I don't give it an option because I, I want it, it depends on what I'm looking for. So if I was looking for voice, for example, it would be six. And then I can see, well, is that is the device that I want actually um, uh, tagging its frames, right? So for example, I could say, well, this is, this is my QoS, so I'll just copy that or, you know, cut it. And then what I'll do is I'll go down here and say, okay, the Cisco, uh, uh, 79, yeah, right here. So this is the 7925. We were troubleshooting some, some Cisco Wi-Fi. So I'll, I'm going to look just for this device and so only frames that are from that device and are marked as voice. And if I see some, then it's probably a, t oh, well, I'm actually not looking at the right, uh, sorry, let me open up the correct uh, packet capture. And then now I can see frames, I can see, okay, is that phone tagging them? And then I can look over and see, yep, it is tagging them because I also have a column called QoS, um, or priority actually, to tell me, okay, it is, right? So I've done others, uh, I did another uh, location where the, the customer bought these Kyocera PDAs off of Amazon, they were like $50, and they put their, their um, electronic health record software on there. Uh, but it also happened to have 
technically a voice application where you could actually press a button for a specific person and it would ring their device because these weren't phones, these were PDAs, and they could have a voice conversation and it didn't work and we wound, up, we, we wound up fixing it. But one of the things that I determined right away was, oh, this device does not, or the application doesn't tag its uh, voice because when I looked up, it took me a while because this thing doesn't have a lot of specs available, but it determined that it does indeed support WMM. So I was like, oh, that's good. But then when I saw the, the voice call, it didn't, it wasn't tagging anything, and I realized, oh, okay, well, the software doesn't. And when I called the developer, sure enough, you know, it doesn't support, the application didn't, didn't tag the data. So I was able to see that right away, very quickly, before we even did the design, just while I was doing my preliminary, hey, can I have one of your, your phones or your devices and let me do some testing, divide, determine its capabilities by looking at probes and associations and things like that. Determine, can't, does it support WMM? Yes, it does, but does the app? No. So this is all good stuff to know going into the design. So again, filters, very powerful things uh, to use to quickly get where you want and see exactly what you want to see. So um, number four. All right. So uh, any questions on filters? Pretty straightforward. I think everybody's got handle on that. Uh, custom name resolution. This is a really fun one. I really like this one because you can name your clients for, for easy viewing. So I do this when I go on site. Again, when I'm, I, I want to see a specific AP and a specific device, I can actually name the device so that when I look at the packet capture, I, I know what frame is from what device. Uh, and uh, without having to like remember the MAC address and all that. So um, that's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, it's just a file that you add. So uh, for for example, here, if I, uh, if I open up uh, this packet capture that has my uh, information from, from my phone, uh, and I go to my filter here for Firefly, which is my phone, I can say, okay, these are all my Firefly flames, uh, frames, uh, but it just says Apple, right? I want it to say Firefly, right? So what I can do is I can go to back into about Wireshark, and I'm going to go back into that personal configuration folder, and I'm going to open this ethers. So by default, uh, there's nothing in the ethers. So what you need to do is you need to add the Mac. So I have my Mac address here for my, for my device. So I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and, and uh, put that in here, and then I'll give it a name. And then I can also say, you know what, I'm also gonna do the AP, right? So I'll go and grab the Mac address for my AP, and I will also throw that in there, and I'll just call that AP. And then I save that. And now you used to, in, uh, in previous versions, I used to be able to just refresh and it worked. It doesn't do that anymore, so I just have to reopen. Um, and now, when I open it, we'll see something different. When I go back and I filter for Firefly, you'll see it says Firefly and AP, because I'm, I, I named both of them. So again, very useful when you're just trying to, to, to keep things straight. And, and this is one thing just for me, again, just one of those ADHD things It just makes it easier for me. Seeing a bunch of jumbled numbers and letters doesn't mean much to me. So this is very helpful. Um, so very useful for when you're showing the customer. Again, right? This is the AP. This is the phone. This is the AP. This is the phone. This is a relationship between those two. The one thing you need to remember, though, in order for this to work, you have to go down to name resolution and make sure that this is checked, resolve physical address. If you don't, you'll just get this. So you need to make sure that that is checked so that it will resolve uh, the name with that file. Um, so name resolution, very, very cool. Uh, enjoy it very much. Um, now, the other thing I really like to do is I save, uh, I, well, we save packet captures, right, to show my customers uh, and to review. But when I have to talk to a customer and show them stuff, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't understand packet captures, right? So I try to make it as easy as possible. If you want to teach or train somebody, something like say on the four-way handshake or on EPOL, you, you know how how uh, you know 802.1x works and how the certificate is transferred and how the tunnels built up and all that stuff, makes it a lot easier if you can only show the packets that you want and maybe comment on them. So that's one of the other cool things you can comment on specific frames, so you can actually this. This is what this frame means and what it's doing. Now, it's only supported in PCAP NG. If you do it in PCAP, it'll just tell you that you know you have to you have to save it as PCAP NG. Um, so, so you can save it for studying and late, later review, etc. So. Um, uh, so here you can see I have three frames that I that I marked, 
and then I have comments on there. So uh, I'll show you how it's very easy to mark them and then uh, comment them equal, equally as easy. So to do that, I simply go to uh, back to Wireshark and to mark a frame, I just simply uh, on, on Mac, I do Command M, on Windows, it's Control M. And then when I do that, uh, you'll notice it turns black and that means that it's been marked. Right, and so I can do that with multiple uh, frames. Now you can't select, uh, at least I don't know of any way to select multiple frames and just say mark all these frames together. You can, for example, say, uh, you know, show me all the probes and then you can say edit, uh, mark all displayed, but that's not the same. I, I, I just, you know, they're not always gonna be the same frames that I want if I wanna do like a relationship of a call or, or I wanna show four-way handshake or I wanna show, you know, 802.1x. So in this scenario, I would just pick the specific frames that I want and then I would export that to a separate file. So I just go to file, save as, and I just, uh, sorry, I go to file, uh, es export specified packets, uh, mark packets only, and then uh, I would just, you know, you know, test or whatever I want to call it. And then uh, when I do that, now when I go and open that, uh, sorry, when I open that particular file up, uh, test, it's going to have just the frames that I want, and they're going to just the ones that I wanted. Now, as far as commenting, uh, what, typically when I show a customer, I have this little review one where I take away all the columns that don't really mean much and I'll add the one, if ones if I need. But then when I have a comment field here, notice there's nothing there, I haven't put any comments. So I can just um, right click and just do packet comment or I can use the shortcut key and I can go you know, frame one here and I can, you know, frame two here and then the comments are in there. Again, for later review, for study, for walking through with with a customer, very helpful. So for example, if I go, if I open up uh, one that I've already done, for example, here's an, um, an example of uh, a .1x transaction, right? So here, here are some comments and here are all the, all the uh, frames that we want. So, uh, and I'm so, nice. so sorry, I just realized that obviously you guys can't see that. But, uh, but here, for example, is uh, the whole transaction, right? So I'm, I'm basically going through all the different, all the different uh, parts of the 802.1x, and I have it commented. So I can just literally tell the tell uh, the customer, or if I'm training somebody, say, okay, well here, this is where it's requesting identity. So authenticator's like, who are you? And the client's like, yo, it's me. And the authenticator's like, Eep is my jam, yo. And client's like, yeah, bro, let's do this. And the authentication server's like, yo, I'm legit. And the client's like, cool, 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 cool. And then here we go. And then the bros create an encrypted tunnel to keep the everything on the download. Same, same tunnel, more of the same, same old same, well, almost there, and yeah, I'm in. And then finally, we go through our four-way handshake, and then finally, boom, we have an encrypted data, right? So I can walk through that very easily so that, so that, thank you. So that it's easy to explain, right? I, I, the customer doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, a CWAP to understand what we're doing, right? Um, and again, it lends credibility. I, I think a lot of times what happens um, with, uh, with us, I think we, we kind of get into the weeds and we kind of start explaining stuff. And customers, end users, you know, that, you know the, the, the CFO of a company is, is probably not gonna understand what you're saying. And when you're showing them MAC addresses and this and that, it's just confusing. But if you can say, hey, here's, a, here's your phone, because it says phone, and here's the AP, and here's, I can literally show you what happened and it makes sense to you. Right, so very helpful. I, I really love the commenting feature uh, for and, and the being able to create these files. Um, now, one more thing that I like is searching. Now, search is, it sounds like silly, like why would I want to search? But there's a lot of reasons why you would want to search for stuff and it's very powerful. Remember, if you wanted to create your own custom uh, particular field or column, for example, in order to do that, you have to, if I go over here and hit like, um, uh, edit column, you'll see there's, a, there's information, well, it's probably not the best one, but maybe this one over here, because um, it shows you, you that I have a, I have a certain uh, filter, basically, that, or field that I'm looking for, and you may not know what that field is, but let's say, for example, I wanted to do, sorry, I wanted to do uh, AP name, right? Actually, it's not going to show up here, so let me, let me get a, 
of something that will, it will show up in. And I'll, I'll look at beacons, because that's where uh, you know, typically we're going to see that. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong profile, right? So I got to go back to 802.11. And I can go over here and say, OK, just let me look at beacons, because I want to look at the AP name. And then what I can do is, well, I don't know where the AP, I don't, I don't want to dig through all this and find it. So what I'm going to do is just Control F or Command F, and I can, I can decide what I'm looking for. In this case, it's just a, a, a string. And I'm not looking in the packet list. I'm actually looking over here. So I'm going to put packet details. And I'm going to say, well, I'm going to look for AP name. I'll put AP dash name. Oh, well, that doesn't work. That's not bringing me. Maybe it's AP underscore name. No. Nope. So you do have to know the correct, what you're looking for, the correct syntax. But AP name and boom, all of a sudden it brings me right here. Now I, I can right click on this and I can say app applies a column. Now I have an AP name column that has the AP name. Right. So again, you can do that with any field. It does help to know, you know, kind of what you're looking for. Um, so, to, but you can do this throughout, you know, an entire packet capture or filtering, like I did on beacons. So I'm narrowing it down. Uh, but filtering is very cool. It's very powerful. Allows you to find things very quickly when you're building, because uh, you can filter on things too. Right. I did. I did right click as column, but you could also say applies a filter and you can create a filter based on a field too. So again, uh, find is your friend because it's going to help you get to find things really quickly that you may want to use. Uh, so control F or, or command uh, F on, uh, on the Mac. Uh, and basically uh, I went I should have done the animation first, I guess, right? Uh, now graphing, graphing is, is pretty cool. Um, I'll admit I haven't I haven't gone too deep, but I have very <laughs> I have <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> the the use case <laughs> the use case that I have uh, is typically on retries, like see what the retries are in comparison to to the data that's out there. So um, so one example of that um, is uh, so I'll bring up again. I was doing a uh, a packet capture. I was doing some some testing on, um, on uh, troubleshooting for a customer on voice, right? So what I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see, well, how, how are the voice packets doing from that device? So what I did, I think I showed you this earlier, right? So I went, we have QoS priority of six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. So I'll, and then I'm gonna filter for that specific phone. In this case, it was a 7925G. And so only frames that are this phone and voice. So now I can see that, and I can get okay. I'm 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 looking here at um, at uh, at the frames, and and you know, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll kind of scroll high level to see what's going on. I I have a retry field here that I I did. I searched for retries, and I right clicked. I created a column, and then I can see well, are, are we getting a lot of retries on here? And then I I do see some. You see every now and then we do get some. There's a there's a, a bunch of retries, but is it really bad? Right, so I can do something like go to well, not something. I can go to statistics and hit IO graph, and then I can start creating. Uh, uh, and actually, I should have deleted that. So we have the first by default is everything. This is all the data I want to see. But I'm like, I want to see retries, right? So I'm like, well, what's what's the retry again? So I'll go over here and I'll, I'll look at my retry, or I'll bring up my sheet, and I'm like, oh yeah, wireless LAN FC retry. Okay, whoops, sorry. Let me go back to wire. <laughs> I'll give you a chance in a moment. Uh, so I'll go back here and I'll say, okay, you know what? I want to see retry. So I'll, I'll just type retry here and I'll paste in that, uh, or I'll just type in WFC uh, retry, uh, retry equals one. So the, if the bit is one, then it's going to be a retry. And then I'm going to pick a color and I'll pick red because red is bad. So when I see red, I know it's bad. And then um, I turn, I enable it. And then I should see, yeah, I don't know, sometimes I need to re, uh, open a graph again. But then you'll see the retries. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't look so bad. But then I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, that's all the data. That's the beak management frames, the control frames, the data frames, and they're not all voice. So maybe I want to search on just voice. So I'm like, well, what's voice? Oh, QoS priority six. Uh, and I'll go wireless LAN QoS priority six, and then I'll go over here and I'll create a new filter, and I'll say this is a voice data, and then I'll paste that in there, and I'll give it a nice blue color so it stands out. If it'll, why is it coming up? I don't know. Blue color, there we go. Uh, pick this nice bright blue, and 
Again, I don't know why lately it's been having me restart it, but, uh, and there we go. If I select that, now we see, oh, whoa, okay, that's our voice, that's our data, that's our retries. No, yeah, that's, not, that's, that's not looking so great. Well, what if, I, what if I say, you know what? Don't just show me just all voice, show me voice and the phone, the specific phone that I, that I, was, that I was doing the call on. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna create that multi-filter thing, right? So I'm gonna say, only show me voice packets that are from, um, that are from that phone, right? And let me go back in there. And we can see, okay, it's not, uh, you know, okay, it looks weird, it's jagged, it doesn't look so great, but you know, it doesn't look terrible. Now, let me open up a different one, because this was the 7925Gs, which worked okay, but weren't great. But this one is the 88, uh, I, I call them 8211, is that the correct, is it 8211? 8821? Okay. ADHD, dyslexia, sorry. Um, so anyway, we'll call it the 8811. It doesn't exist. That way Cisco won't get mad at me. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and put that there, and I'm only looking at that. But again, I'm like, whoa, look at these retries. That's, that's a lot of retries right now. It's like everything seems to be a retry. What is happening here? So, oh, wait a minute. I'm filtering only on retries. Again, be careful when you're looking at your filters that you have exactly what you want to see. I don't want to see just retries because I'm like, this is bad. Well, I want to see just voice. Ah, okay. All right. Well, it's definitely looking worse than that 7925. So let me go back in here to my IO graph. And now I got my filters all set. So now I can, I should be able to, see, oh, I, I know what, what, again, filter on what you want. I'm doing the non-existent 8821, right? So I need to capture that MAC address. So I'm going back to my IO and I got re, I got to tweak my filter. I'm not looking at that 7925 anymore. I'm looking at this phone and boom. Now I can see, oh, wait, that did not look so great. So I go here and I'm like, oh yeah. Wow, that's much worse, right? You can see that, the, that we're getting a lot of retries. And then, I, that, then all, everything we've kind of been working on kind of starts working together because I'm like, well, what, what's going on? What's the problem? And, you know, I got my data rate column here because I figured data rate's an important thing to see. And I'm like, uh, well, 86.7, uh, okay, well, this 11N, uh, you know, um, uh, so uh, with um, VH, VHT, so that's, that sounds right. And then I... I go like, wait a minute, let me do something here. Let me, I'm looking at this phone, right? Let me, why don't I see what's going on here as far as the relationship in the, between the phone and the AP? So I'm gonna, I'm copying that MAC address for that phone because I know that's the phone now. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go create an alias for it or a name. So I'm gonna go back to my ethers file and I'm gonna call this one uh, phone, right? I'm gonna save it. And unfortunately, uh, this version, uh, it, it, for a while, it hasn't let me just refresh. I actually have to reopen the capture. Um, and then I bring it up, and I go back to my filter, right? So I'm filtering on that 8811 that doesn't exist. Uh, and I'm doing, uh, I don't want to see just retries. I want to see just the voice. And all of a sudden, now I have, OK, the phone. Here's the phone, and there's the AP. Let's look at those data rates again. Uh, 86.7, all right, when it's going from the, the, the network to the phone, it's at 86.7, but whenever the phone hits, it starts dropping, but watch as I scroll down, it starts going down and down, and then we have, we're in the 30s now, and then eventually it's gonna get down to like 19, and then 13, and then so what's going on here? So it turned out that there was a bug in the code for, the, um, for those specific phones that if it's on AP, AM, AMPDU, uh, that it would, it didn't like it, and it just kept retrying, and it would, it would throttle down basically. It would, it would lower its data rate and lower and lower until finally it was so low where it was just doing retries, and you couldn't, and the calls would be really bad, and eventually you disconnect. So uh, I, I, and how did I find that out? I put it on Twitter. I took a pic, I took a picture, and I said, "Hey, anybody see this before?" And sure enough, one, somebody on Twitter said, "Oh yeah, it's this thing." And then I Googled it. He actually gave me the exact, the exact uh, uh, bug. And, and I searched for it, and it came right up on Cisco's site, and I was like, oh, this is what we need to do. And sure enough, once we did that, did a new packet capture, and it was 80, 86.7, 86.7, 86.7 for, between both clients, right? So that was a fix, right, that I found because I was able to dig into exactly what I wanted to see.
right? I was able to see, is there a problem here? Well, I know there's a problem here. I can hear it, but what is the problem, right? And so I was able to determine that, again, by just taking, getting the filters, having my profiles ready, having the colors ready so I could see what's data, what's not, right? Get, using the I.O. graph, being able to, be, being able to say, well, what, what, what column works here? I probably should look at the data rates. Is this thing even you know, transmitting at the correct data rates? Um, I can see things like uh, power levels, right? I can see RSSI, I can see noise. So I can see our, how are we hearing, I'm sitting next to the phone, how is it hearing the AP? It's hearing it at negative 45. Well, that should be, you know, it should be fine. And if I'm hearing it at neg 45, then we can't be that far away from the AP. There's no way this phone is going to be heard, you know, less than like, say, neg 60 or something. I mean, right? I mean, if it's out, just outside the door. So very helpful stuff to, to quickly get you through um, your, uh, your analysis. So uh, pretty much, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I, I hope a lot of it, I mean, I know some of it was redundant. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Um, all of this honestly just came out of the fact that I just look at stuff on screens and my face goes blank and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm seeing. So, so I'm like, how can I make this easier for my brain to understand? And all these things come together so that they can makes it, makes it really easy for me to, to understand. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Sorry. Thanks.